Good morning, you guys. Happy Friday. Today we're going to review multiplication. So it should be hopefully fresh in your brain because we do this a lot throughout all the school year. But I'm going to go over a few examples and then I'm going to do... You know what? Yes, I'm going to do a few examples here and then hopefully that will jog your memory. Let's see. We have... Let's do something simple like That marker does not work. That marker doesn't work either. How is this possible? It's just me using them. Alright, let's try this one again. 17. I'm gonna make it bigger. 17 times 5. Alright. So we know that there's a certain order that we have to do, that we have to multiply. It's not just going down, that's addition or subtraction, right? We have to actually get a little creative. So first we're doing the ones place, right? If we look at this number by itself, 17, 7 is in the ones place, the 1 is in the tens place. 5 is just one digit, so it's just the ones place. So first we multiply 5 times 7, which is 35. But we can't just write 35 in one spot. There's only one spot available. So we have to write the 3 up here. 35. Now, we take our 5 and we multiply it by the tens place. What's 5 plus, I'm sorry, what's 5 times 1? 5 plus 3, 8. 85. Right? And we can do this even if our number is very large. Uh, 3,126 times 4. It's the same thing. We still go in the same order. 1's place, 10's place, 100's place, thousands place. The number I'm multiplying by, I only have one digit, so it's kind of easy. Because all I have to do is I have to, I'm going to use a different color. All I have to do is start in my ones place. 4 times 6, 24. So I write 24. 4 times 2, 8. Plus 2 is 10. 10, right? I split up my number. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 4 times 3 is 12. So now I have nowhere to put my 1, so I could just write 12, comma, 12,504. So hopefully we remember how to do this and how we know how to go across. I also have a turtle head multiplication video that link that I attached. Those are for multiple digit numbers when we do two digit times two digit. So hopefully this jogs your memory because that's what you're doing today. Multiplication. That's it. Just multiplication. Hopefully it'll we'll remember um, all this good stuff. Alright, so restart. We're on chapter 28. This one is from the perspective or the point of view of Shoshana. And remember, they're going to Portland Street. Shoshana is with Joel and Brendan. Chase is at Portland Street trying to get away from Bear and Aaron. Um, and now we're going to hopefully they're just showing up at Portland Street to hopefully help Chase because he's trying to get the metal back to Mr. Saltway. So let's see. Chapter 28, Shoshana Weber. By the time I get to Portland Street, I'm walking so fast that the others are half a block behind me running to catch up. Chase. I didn't think I could be madder at him than I already am, but this almost makes it worse. He's innocent of the attack on Joel. I saw it with my own eyes. It was easier when I could just hate his guts. No questions asked. But it's not as simple as that. Not now. Every time I work myself into a good rage, I'll see him trying to protect Joel, or working with the video club, or interacting with Mr. Solway, and that will ruin everything. 
It's the mix of good and bad that makes my head spin. Worse, a lot of mean things I said turn out to be wrong. And it might be too late to take them back. In the lobby, I wait for the others to catch up and drag them down the hall to Mr. Solway's room. I knock on the door, but burst inside without waiting for an answer. The old man is doubled over in his favorite chair, working at his sneaker lace with intense concentration. Spying me, he exclaims, Well, don't just stand there. Come on in and help me undo this knot. I don't bend in the middle like I used to. And when I do, I get close enough. I can't see it. He's having a hard time untying his shoe. I step inside and the others follow. By all means, Mr. Solway adds, invite the whole world. Watch the old guy trying to untie his shoes. Who's bringing the popcorn? You're going to have to blow up all the balloons yourselves. I haven't got the wind for it anymore. I kneel down and pick the knot out of his shoelace. Mr. Solway, I ask breathlessly, has Chase been here yet? He shakes his head. Haven't seen him in days. You either, he adds a little accusingly. I feel awful. I haven't come by since Joel got hurt, and now I realize that Chase hasn't visited since that horrible day either. It never occurred to me before because my only thoughts about Chase were how much I despised him. But to Mr. Solway, it must look like we didn't need him anymore because our video was finished, and we just tossed him aside. It's my fault, I confess. I got mad at Chase for something that was only partly his fault. That's why he stopped coming. Not because he didn't want to see you, but because he didn't want to see me. And I stopped because I didn't want to run into him. I feel a hand on my shoulder. Joel is standing next to me and I realize that he's trying to tell me I'm getting so worked up about this emotionally that I'm not making much sense. A crooked smile spreads over Mr. Solway's face. I wouldn't be young again for all the tea in China. Kimberly steps forward. We saw a movie about you in my school. That was Warrior, Brendan supplies quickly. The project Shoshana and Chase did together. There's a commotion out in the hall, loud voices and pounding footsteps. I'm thinking this is Chase and Aaron and Bear. Mr. Solway frowns. Not wheelchair roller derby again. The greatest generation. They think they own the world. I poke my head out the door in time to see Chase sprinting toward me with, of all things, a vacuum cleaner clutched in his arms. As I watch, he's yanked violently backward off his feet. He falls hard, still clinging to the appliance. Aaron is on the floor behind him, both hands on the electrical cord that brought Chase down. Bear hurdles the fallen Aaron and descends on Chase like a bird of prey. And when Chase won't give up the vacuum, Baron Bear rains punches on his head and shoulders. I hear a cry of outrage from Kimberly, but it's not as loud as my own. The two of us rush forward and jump on Bear, trying to pull him off Chase, and it works. He scrambles back to his feet and shoves, shoves us away from him. Kimberly bounces off the wall, and as we stumble together, our heads meet with a crack. I see stars. Hey, little undersized Brendan comes flying at Bear, his anger lending him courage nobody ever knew he had. He begins pummeling Bear, landing blow after blow. It's insane. David versus Goliath. He isn't even making proper fists. His thumbs stick out like apple stems. So he's punching like this. Then Bear's shocked expression turns to cruel glee, and he laughs even as Brennan continues to flail at him. Finally, he hauls off and catches his much smaller assailant with a bone-crushing uppercut to the jaw. Brandon lifts off the floor and lands six feet away. Amazingly, Brandon gets up, his chin bright red from the punch, and starts for Bear again. Chase is on his feet, reaching out to hold Brandon off. It's a good idea. Those two gorillas could really dismantle him. Aaron snatches the vacuum off the floor and draws it back like a baseball bat, and the ball is Chase's head. I rasp a warning. Chase! Mr. Solway's walker comes freewheeling down the hall. It slams into Aaron's kidneys just when he's off balance for the home run swing. He and the vacuum tip over backward onto Bear. Three of them. 
Aaron Bear and the Hoover. So the vacuum clattered to the floor. Ha! Bullseye! exclaims Mr. Solway with satisfaction. There they are. The heavy doors at the end of the corridor are thrown open and Joel appears leading Nurse J Duncan and two security guards. Way to go, Joel! At least somebody had the brains to go for help. Aaron and Bear are ready to fight another round, but the arrival of security and the head nurse puts an end to the action. Brawling in the middle of court-ordered community service won't look good on their records. Bear points an accusing finger at Chase. It's his fault. Nurse Duncan is in a towering rage. What is? Residents are beginning to appear in doorways to investigate the cause of the disturbance. So the head nurse drops her voice. What is all this insanity about? In answer, Chase pulls the filter bag of the, off the hoover and dumps the contents onto the floor. He digs through the mound of fuzz and dirt and comes up with a star-spangled ribbon, gray with dust. Dangling off the end of it is the highest and most renowned military decoration any American soldier can earn, the Medal of Honor. Not even the contents of the vacuum bag can dull its brilliance. Is that mine? Mr. Solway asks in amazement. Chase nods. I took it from you. I don't remember doing it. It was before my accident, but that's no excuse. He hands it to its rightful owner and bows his head, shamefaced. It was the old you, Brendan mumbles around a rapidly swelling jaw. There's only one me. Chase says it so quietly that I can hardly hear him. Mr. Solway turns the metal over in his fingers. He seems stunned. What about those two clowns? He asks. Were they in on it? Aaron and Bear turn terrified eyes on his former best friend. It was just me, Chase replies. I took it and I hid it behind a loose cedar shake on the roof of my house. That's what I was doing when I fell. I guess I got what I deserved. He shakes his head. I don't know why I would do such an awful thing. I must have thought I could sell it. Mr. Solway looks shocked and very sad. I almost speak up for Chase, but the sight of the stolen metal strikes me mute. Good Chase, bad Chase. There's no question we're looking at the handiwork of the worst one of all. I can tell that Joel wants to support Chase, but he doesn't know what to say. He's the quiet twin. I'm the mouthy one. Brendan's jaw is turning purple, so he's not talking either. Kimberly's completely lost, and Aaron and Bear are so relieved that no one's blaming them that they're keeping their mouths shut too. The only words come from Nurse Duncan. Well, I have no idea what any of this is supposed to mean. The one thing I understand is that a crime has been committed here. She takes a deep breath. I'm calling the police. Ooh. I wonder why Chase decided to not say anything about Aaron and Bear being involved because they are not his friends and they're not very nice people but I guess he just wanted to he's trying to change for sure um, it seems like something has to come out because a lot happened with the fighting and they were trying to stop him from giving it back to Mr. Solway so it might come out that they were in trouble anyway we have two chapters left so we'll finish the book next week.